Hi there, this is um, another comfy video about um, in painting and it, I've covered it before but, uh, but as you learn stuff you learn you learn better ways of doing it essentially and uh, so this has got quite a few improvements and it's aimed mostly at you've got a scene like this and you want to stick a figure in or 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 you know just uh, change that to a doorway going out into the sun uh, some you know some some change to a pretty much finished image so my point is that this talking about in painting something on an image that you're you, that is complete and uh, you've upscaled it and you you decide you you either want a figure here which is what we're going to do or um or it's not you know different light out the window maybe there's it's broken and there's trees and countryside outside all that sort of thing can be quite difficult to do, uh, especially once your image is made. So this is a way of doing that quite precisely. We'll start at the very beginning. Oh, there's a good place to start that, isn't it? First of all, we'll start with the prompt, actually. Your, your prompt should be, at the beginning, whatever you're in painting. So we've got a whole line here. Beautiful source press. Black hand. Casting spell. Angry. I could say cross, but oh, no, I said angry. And then the rest of it is um, the prompt that made the image we're in painting into. So I, I've, uh, the workflow will be below at the end and I've annotated it all so that uh, it'll tell you what, what you've got to do uh, at what point. So I start with everything turned off in this. So if we go here, so here's the muter and I would start with everything turned off. So I turn everything off and we just want on the first crop. I'm not going to run this. I know, I know people love, uh, you know, watching all those nice green bars run across, but uh, I find it a bit tedious, really. They're only showing off about how, how their uh, 4090 is uh, screaming fast. So what we want to do is to put a figure in here, our sorceress. She's going in that spot there. So what we want to do is take a section out of this that tells you enough about the surroundings, so you can see what the surroundings are and the feel and all the rest of it, and the scale. And we want to process just this square because this is a a four thousand pixel image. So I, I don't want to be I don't want to be processing that, and it won't process very well uh, at that size either. So what we're doing is chopping out a seven six eight bit of it that is going to be our sorceress's new home. And you set the crop position here. So this is the number of where it's going to crop it out. It should say crop X and Y there. I put the wrong names in, but I'll correct that before I save the workflow. But uh, this is the position, these numbers are the position of where you want this square to be on this image. So it's X pixels to the right, Y pixels down, because the start crop place is always top left. So that's the piece we're going to put our lady in. And then we need to put in a lady. And as you see here, I've done a very, not very artistic, I can draw a better lady than that, but in this case I'm drawing a pretty crude lady. She could be cruder than that. I've, I've probably gone too far. I've, I've left a little pale bit there. So this is just drawn in mask editor. So you can see that. And then what we do next, what this next section does, is to put a patch of dark noisy stuff in that hole. So here's our noise, which is generated by this. And here she is. And you can adjust the general tone and colour. This is in a dark room and she's wearing black, so I've gone pretty dark. But by, with these figures here and these figures here, all these, all these sizes are automated, so you don't need to worry about them. So with this here and this here, you can fine tune the light and dark on this figure. And then when you're happy with that, you send it up for the first time through a sampler. So you need to turn on your checkpoint, turn on your first process, and that goes through a fairly high denoise, so that's at 60, but it could be from 55 up really. And there's nothing else to worry about here. And what you can do is, because it's quite a small image, 768, you can do, you can do uh, quite a few seeds till you, find a, till you find a sorceress you like. So I would advise you to, you know, have a, have a, <laughs> have a good play at this point to, to get a good figure. And here she is. And then we go on to the next section. So I've annotated all of these so it tells you what to do at each stage. And what we're doing is dropping her back into the original image, the first image, so we can see what she looks like. You can drop her back into the um, just the or original cropped square, but I actually have started to drop her back 
drop it back into the original image because you can really see, you know, how the figure looks. So she looks quite at home in there. And she is masked in by, as you see, very roughly painting over her in Mask Editor. I have just, that, that, that image appears in here and I roughly painted over her. Just to, I, this doesn't need to be carefully done at all. You just roughly paint, cut, paint over her. And that drops her into our image there. And you can do little bits of colour correction. SDXL tends to make everything go a bit cyan and warmer. So I've taken the temperature down and uh, sometimes you need to darken a bit as well. Here I haven't. I've just taken the temperature down. But you don't have to regenerate to do that. You can do that here. And that's why you turn things on in series. Because if you make any adjustment here, it shows immediately. So you can fine-tune this until she fits in perfectly colour-wise. And it'll be a pretty poor fit. You see all this hazy stuff. So and then what we do after that, in the next stage, that's all piped down here. So in this stage, we crop with exactly the same crop as we used before. So this is exactly the same as the first crop we used. You crop out the same, exactly the same square in our remade image. And then you can refine. And you see she, she's pretty, she's not great. Not bad, but she's, you know, she's a long way short of how, what, what you would want. And you see all this stuff here where she's been dropped in is very crude. But fear not, we can improve this. So then you resize this square, because if you resize it and put it through again, you get an improvement. So you're refining just this square she's in. And so I've, I've done her um, double the size of her. So she's now 1536. I would say between 1.5, that would take a one, depending on the subject. For a, for a whole figure like this, I think doubling the size is probably quite good. And then that's put through the sampler at quite a low denoise, 35. Between, I would advise between 35 and 45. What you don't want it to do is to change the background too much. So anyway, so there she is, and she's much improved. And I think she's good enough for a small figure in a big picture. You, you you don't you know uh, these hands and that are only uh they're only 30, 20 pixels across you know so i don't think it, you need to be too worried about that so that's your final in paint it final uh, image and now you all you've got to do is drop this square back in and you do that here so here we go what we do we first of all with this shrink the image back down again to the original size when it came out you don't really have to worry about all this because on my workflow, it's all automated. You, it's all done. Uh, the f I'm piping the figures around, piping the numbers around. We'll zip back and show that so you understand what all these, those noodles are doing. So if, um, if you find that dropping a square in doesn't produce a nice result, I, you've had to do her at, so, at a high, quite a high denoise. And uh, as you can see here, you've, we've lost a bit of the detailing in the columns. So as a, an alternate method, what you can do is uh, use a mask. So I've plumbed the mask from the preview bridge in the same place where the solid mask goes. So you see the solid mask is no longer connected to anything. And I've replaced it with um, the preview mask and with a, a, a blur on the mask. So all you have to do, you don't have to be terribly precise. Open that in mask editor, paint over the bits you want. Like I said, you can come back and, and tweak this as much as you want. But uh, she's very close anyway, so she should look fine. I have painted a sort of doggy thing on there. Oh, I, I missed a bit of her there. See, I hate mask editor. I'm missing a bit of that. And then you just run that and you should see her pop into view. There she is. And the, previously we lost the nice detail on the columns, but now it's all back again. And as you see, we have quite a nice join. Okay, so I hope that, I hope that was uh, useful and interesting. Um, I just quickly go through where all the numbers come from. The numbers here are um, placing this crop of these numbers, and these numbers are used down here, piped along, and those numbers are used to drop her back into the same position. So that's all automated. It'll always drop her back in the same position. And the other numbers going around are just correcting the sizes, just sending the 768 uh, images, or the size of your crop. These are piping the size of your crop. So you don't have to do a square. I would advise to do a square, but you don't have to. And uh, they make, so, make sure that everything fits back in absolutely perfectly. Okay, so that covers that, I think. Uh, it is uh, all pretty much annotated, so you can, uh, you can follow along. Okay, thank you very much, and thanks for watching.